One other point to mention that I think in general we often overlook is for patients with sensitivity with bleaching, use products that are desensitizers. Reality have ranked this product the best desensitizer for about the last seven years. And because these are hydrophilic, the peroxide can still pass through and do its bleaching, but it stops the fluid movement in the teeth. So if a patient is likely to be sensitive, I would always paint on a desensitizer first before either surgery or home bleaching. The internal bleaching technique, once again, we have the high predictability of using ozone as part of the internal bleaching approach. Working through, and obviously, um, again, I would recommend you subscribe to that reality where Michael Miller does all the hard work. But the problem that usually arises is that when you carry through the procedure, the tooth is usually too wide. <coughs> Never have I had a patient complain the tooth is too wide. They usually say, can you now bleach all the other teeth to match the white one? And uh, wonderful work, and obviously Carl Glockner has done wonderful work in Graz in, in, um, as well in, in Austria. Wonderful work as regards to cane with, with bleaching and using the predictability of ozone and peroxide to be much more conservative and to allow us to do minimal invasive dentistry for the 21st century. I would argue that once again, for bleaching to be effective, we should all be using ozone within our daily practice. It's giving us that predictability. It's giving us a predictability and something that's far better for the patient. What would you prefer to do? Would you prefer to do a lot of porcelain laminate veneers if you were the patient? Or would you rather have ozone and peroxide to achieve a result like that in about 40 minutes? What we often say to these patients is often these patients present wanting porcelain veneers. And we often say to them, yes, you could have six or eight or ten porcelain veneers, but we'd like to try the bleaching with peroxide and ozone first. And what we'll do is we will maybe charge you 500 pounds for this procedure. And if you're not happy and you want the porcelain veneers, we will credit it to your treatment afterwards for the veneers. So what you're ending up doing is getting 500 pounds for 30 or 40 minutes work. And you're ending up whereby that procedure is allowing you to work through and have a highly predictable end result. So it's a win-win situation. It's allowing us to do much more conservative procedures and ozone is bringing bleaching into a whole new realm. <coughs> Ozone's allowing us to do procedures in a simple, conservative way. We published our work with MRSA and C. diff in uh, 2007, and we presented this to the European IADR, the PEF meeting held in London, and published in the IADR website. And I'm very pleased to say that now 800 hospitals in England and Wales are using ozone to add to on all clothes and everything else in order to dramatically reduce MRSA and C. diff. What we showed was that with MRSA, 10 seconds of ozone, in fact, we use the ozone from the therazone unit, simple the ozonated water system, 10 seconds of contact eliminated 100% of MRSA every time. With the C. diff, 10 seconds of contact with the therizone water eliminated C. diff every time, but it made the spores germinate. So we had to hit them a second time. It's always worth bearing in mind when you have C. diff, they are spores. But the very interesting thing is the ozone makes them germinate and then you can kill them. So this is a, a major breakthrough. And when you consider that in 1986, 87, Estimates were that about 20 to 30,000 people were dying in hospitals in England and Wales from these superbugs. Since the introduction of this in 600 hospitals, the death rate has dropped to 
thousand last year. It's still a lot of people dying from super infections from these bugs. And hopefully more hospitals and more facilities will start using ozone as a routine to manage these super infections. Ozone has also been passed as a sterilizing agent by the FDA and eliminates prions, which are the cause of new variant CJD. The estimate in England and Wales is that about one in 500 of the population are carriers of prions associated with their eating of hamburgers um, in the UK in the early 1980s when the meat was clearly contaminated. It's a big worry because these stick to stainless steel, autoclaving does not kill them, and they are transmissible as proven by publications. Therefore, if we're to do a proper infection control procedure, I believe that all instruments should be placed in ozone before autoclaving. What that will do is break up any prions that may be stuck on those instruments. So we're going to summarize now some of these uses. And for ozonated water uses, clearly what, what do we do as a routine? We're doing hand washing as a routine with ozonated water. We're cleaning our worktops and handles with it. Every patient who comes into us, we give them a rinse for a full mouth disinfection <coughs> before we treat them. So we are actually treating the most sweet smelling patients you have ever smelled. No halitosis and aerosols are dramatically reduced from bacterial contact. Oral ulcerations, and again with oral ulcerations, not just those native water, as I said, the biosonic system <laughs> is the best for the oral ulcerations, for aphthous ulcers, for, uh, for herpes labialis, and so on, promoting heating and all of those sites. For use in ultrasonic scaling, I believe that every single practice should use ozonated water for ultrasonic scaling. <coughs> Not water. That's going back to the dark ages. Think about it. Ozonated water is totally biocompatible. Human cells have no problem with it whatsoever. Bacteria are killed because the bacteria don't have the defense mechanisms for oxidants. So you're as the most powerful antimicrobial agent available, wipe out all the bugs once you're scaling. It neutralizes the endotoxins and lipopo lipopolysaccharides, so it allows reattachment. It blocks the nuclear factor kappa B system, so it stops bone resorption. It's an oxidant, so it helps with, with whitening. And as Professor Vilio Bocchi has shown in numerous medical papers, it promotes healing. It releases interferon in the tissues. It releases beneficial cytokines in the tissues. It raises oxygen tension in the tissues. It promotes healing. And when you're treating patients, get a patient with lots of bleeding, so as soon as you have your ozone system, treat half the mouth with your conventional method, with water, whatever you're doing in your ultrasonic. Do the other half of the mouth with ozonated water in your ultrasonic. Bring the patient back in three days or a week and have a look. Do a bleeding index. Look at the health of the ginger on the ozone treated side. You will never, ever not use ozone again in those pockets. And of course, you can use the biosonics, you can deliver ozone gas and so on, and the ozone water by the tip into the root canal systems, into the periodontal pockets as well. Yes? So, so would you recommend to use ozonated water also for uh, implant procedures and this infection? Most of the top in, um, implantologists around the world have been doing that in the last three years. So they're using ozonated water as part of their surgical procedures. 